general approach uh, is going to be discussed in the session and still consists of a having a great understanding of what the phenotype is, because all of the uh, diagnostic tests really uh, have meaningfulness in the context of what the pretest probability of the condition is and knowing what clinically behaves like autoimmune encephalitis or autoimmune associated epilepsy helps us understand what the results of a test may mean. Uh, because like any test, you know, there's a risk of false positives and false negatives and really comes down to whether clinically a patient might have the condition or not. Um, so, you know, the approach really um, continues to be looking for evidence of neuroinflammation through spinal fluid analyses, neuroimaging, uh, neural autoantibody testing and serum and spinal fluid and as appropriate malignancy screening. Um, and really interpreting these results comes back to the clinical context and whether a patient has a clinical history that's consistent with the post ball autoimmune cause. And I think we're a lot better now at understanding what that really means. Um, the phenotype of autoimmune encephalitis is now very well recognized uh, by most clinicians, rapidly progressive encephalopathy with um, other neurologic signs. Uh, seizures are very often part of that in the greater context of other neurologic symptoms. But, you know, there's an improved understanding now of um, what the seizure presentations can be, what specific types of seizures these patients tend to experience, which tend to be temporal and perisylvian in semiology, what the EEG characteristics may be. Um, and most importantly, what um, characteristics patients who don't have a phenotype of autoimmune encephalitis and have an autoimmune associated epilepsy can have, because those are the patients that really are a core diagnostic gap and, and therapeutic gap too, because uh, when you do identify an antibody, which tends to be intracellular targeted, like a GAT65, they don't tend to respond very well to treatment. But the diagnostic gap remains. And so we know those patients are out there, patients who are walking, talking, showing up to an epilepsy clinic with an unknown cause of epilepsy and may have an underlying autoimmune cause. And what we need to be better better at is really having a rational targeted screening of patients who have a phenotype of autoimmune associated epilepsy for neural autoantibodies and for consideration of um, immune targeted treatment if they do have an autoimmune cause of seizures.